Ta -ta! Welcome, welcome to another art history lesson. Today, I want to talk about pointillism because pointillism is awesome. It's just like cubism. It's a modern art period and it's really fun to paint in pointillist style. So, what is pointillism? Pointillism is a style of painting that involves using dots in different colors to create an illusion of form. I want to draw a flower in a field today, so I start drawing the stem with my points. I grab my great green and start putting dots that will form a line and that line will be the stem of my flower. And then I'm starting to draw the leaves and the leaves are going to be points as well. I mean everything in this drawing kits are going to be made of points. So, why don't you grab your favorite green marker and start drawing our flower. Just put dots instead of drawing lines and if you put them close to each other enough, they're gonna start looking like lines. Don't stop with just the stem of the flower. Since we already have our green marker, let's also draw some grass. Pointillism means patience, kids. Yeah, it really teaches a person how to be patient. Because we can't just draw a line like really fast like we normally do. We need to put like a lot of dots to make that line. But at the end of this painting, I realize that it doesn't take much longer than drawing regularly. I guess it's because we have more control when we're drawing with dots because the process is slow and we have a lot of time to think what we're gonna draw while we're putting those dots on the paper. I'm gonna use my Yabba Dabba yellow for my flower. And first, of course, I'm drawing the outlines, the contours. What is a contour? Contour means an outline of anything, of a drawing, of a shape. So we learned something new today, again. <laughs> like we never do that. Our flower is starting to look pretty good, so I guess it's time to start talking about some art history. Who are the most famous pointillist painters in art history? It's George Seurat and Paul Signac, or as the French pronounce, Georges Seurat and Paul Signac. If I'm not pronouncing them right, please excuse my French. Even Picasso made some pointillist paintings. Yeah, we learned about Picasso in our previous lesson. So, if you didn't watch that, kids, please go ahead and check that out. It's about cubism. And it's as much fun as pointillism. I'm using my best blue for some puffy fluffy clouds. We're just drawing everything in our scene with points now. But after we're done with the drawing, we're gonna start filling in the shapes. With points again, of course. Pointillism was very popular in late 1880s until the 1920s. I guess the most famous pointillist painting in history is by George Seurat and it's called A Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte. When you look at pointillist paintings from far away, they don't look very different than other paintings. They just look like normal paintings. But the secret is revealed when you look closer to them. Because as you get closer to a pointillist painting, everything you see in that painting starts looking like it's splitting into its atoms. It almost feels like looking at something through a microscope. Alright, I'm almost done with my drawing. I guess, for the last but not least, I'm just going to add a butterfly in my scene. You can draw and paint anything in a pointillist style, kids. I mean, you don't have to draw what I'm drawing. If you have another idea, like a tree or a house or a face, you can draw that in a pointillist style. So, 
Never hesitate to experiment. I'm gonna add some lighter greens to my flower stem and then I'm gonna start filling in the shapes. The rest of this video is going to be playing a little fast so you can pause it anytime you want, you can catch up and then resume. When we're painting with pointillist style, it's very important to be patient because if I rush things, my points will start to look like little lines and I don't want that because that's not pointillism, maybe that's lineism. I mean, I don't know even if that's a word, but I, I don't know, I never heard about it. But pointillism, you need to be patient. You need to put each dot there clearly and nicely. The closer the dots to each other, the better. But I mean, not so close that we're totally filling in the shape so we can't see the dots anymore. We need to be able to see the dots, but at the same time, they need to be close to each other. At the moment, I'm just using one color for each shape in my drawing. But we're gonna start mixing those dots with different colors, kids, and that is the magical part of pointillism. I mean, it's an illusion. Like when you look at it from far away, it looks as a whole. Only when you look closer, you start seeing the points. And the thing is, different colors blend with each other very nicely in pointillism. When you're looking at it from far away, all those colors will look like they're mixing. It's just like mixing colors when you're doing watercolors. Let's say, you're mixing red with yellow when you're doing watercolors. The resulting color will be orange. In pointillism, similarly, if you put a bunch of red dots on your paper with a bunch of yellow dots and you look at it from far away, you're gonna start seeing orange. Even if you didn't use your orange marker, isn't that magical? I think it is. Artists usually mix their colors on their palette. But pointillists mix their colors right on the canvas. Points are the most basic element of any shape. Because if we want to have a line, we need to have a bunch of points right next to each other so that they look like a line. If we start connecting those lines to each other, we can create different shapes. And finally, if we start connecting those shapes to each other, we get a volume. I mean, a three-dimensional shape, just like a perspective cube. So, the dots have no dimension. They just have a position. But lines are one-dimensional, they have a length. Shapes are two-dimensional and they have an area. Finally, three-dimensional shapes have volume. What is going on? This was supposed to be an art lesson and I'm talking about geometry. But, I mean, all of these things are connected. When you grow up, kids, you're gonna realize that arts and sciences are really connected to each other. Alright, I started coloring my sky with my best blue and sky has a big area so it's gonna take a bunch of points to fill it in all the way but maybe I'm not gonna do that, maybe I'm just gonna put dots that are further away from each other. This is me just being lazy kids. If you want, you can go ahead and put many more dots for your sky. It's definitely gonna look better. Better than mine. Now we come to the most exciting part, putting little flowers on my grass, which is like a nice small detail, but I love details, because drawing something is really hard, but once you're done with the most of the work, adding the details is easy and fun. I'm gonna go wild here and use all kinds of colors for my flowers.
Finally, I want to draw the soil because if there are flowers and plants, then there is soil. And I'm going to use a lot of colors for my soil too. Mainly, I'm going to use my brown, but then I'm going to add some yellows and reds and greens and whatever because there are all kinds of things in the soil. Bugs and insects and worms and dry leaves and I don't know, anything you can think of because it's nature. How's your painting looking kids? I bet it's looking better than mine. Just stay with me for one more minute and then we'll be done with our painting. I love modern art and art history in general. I also love this pointillist painting. I just don't know what's the point. 